Good morning. Good morning. I'm Lana Mayhew. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Dayton. If this is your first time here, a special welcome, welcome to you, and thank you for sharing your morning with us. We would very much appreciate it if you would take a few minutes to fill out. There's a little top thing part in the bulletin um, that you can just tear off and take over to the Welcome Center um, after the service. Giving our reading and invocation this morning is myself. Our vigil holder is Linda Smith. And myself and Linda Andriaco will offer our interfaith candle lighting, which reminds us of the many sources of wisdom and truth available to us from all the world's religious traditions. So the kids are with um, Teresa Napke, but I'm going to go ahead and do just the blessing for the youth. So just know with me that there is absolute peace and love with our youth, knowing that they are absolutely cultivating that divine wisdom, that divine love, that divine support, and knowing that everything is supporting them in every single way. And I give such thanks for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. So, our announcements. If you can uh, carry a tune and want to join a little choir, um, we're putting together, please add your name and phone number to the clipboard sheet at the Welcome Center that's over there. Um, there'll be a couple of rehearsals in August and September. Reverend Cece will contact you um, about them when she comes back at the end of July. She has been gone for a while. That's a nice little vacation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> our annual canoe and kayak trip followed by a putluck picnic is this Saturday, July 28th. I won't be making it. I'm sorry, but I'll be out of town, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and so we always have a blast on the river and at the picnic that follows. You can arrive at 9 a.m. if you're boating. If you're coming for the potluck um, picnic, um, arrive before noon. Did, did, was there something else? Okay. Um, we will be at the shelter right by the river and the takeout for the boats. Please bring a dish to share. I don't know, Kelly, did you want to say anything else about it? No, that's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I kind of, I forgot. Oh, we, you can sign yeah. up on the sign up okay. sheet, and then we, if we have to cancel or something, we can All let right. you know, but we also okay. have Facebook and good. Event, so we Oh, have, that's always good. You can monitor that for changes. Okay, good. Um, also, we have another class, Exploring Roots class, will be offered on Tuesday. <coughs> um, <coughs> Nature. There's a lot of announcements. Um, <laughs> Tuesday evenings in August, 6.30 to 9.30. You must have completed foundations or beyond limits to enroll. The Roots of the Science of Mind is a transformational course and a fascinating journey through the minds of new thought luminaries who greatly influence Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science. You will deepen your understanding of the philosophical foundations of religious science and the other new thought teachings. Tuition is $200. The class is being facilitated by Stephanie Stewart. More details, including books required, required are on the flyer in your bulletin. So look there. That's a really good class. If, you're not, if you've not taken that class, that's a really, really good class to um, take. It gives you a lot of background, and it's very. I think it's a very interesting class. It's been a long time since so I took that one. We are establishing a long-term partnership with Choices Foster Care Agency specifically supporting their independent living program for teens and young adults aging out of the foster care system and becoming established in their own apartments. Last Sunday, we had a very special guest speaker, which I thought he was a really good speaker, um, the, la the manager of that program. If you missed out last Sunday, you can learn more about the independent living program by watching the video on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. We will be supporting the agency in three ways. The most immediate is helping out with some of the school supplies needed by these high school and college students. The bulletin has a fly, flyer listing the new items needed as well as some info on the other ways we are working with them. You can place your new items in the barrel by the Welcome Center. Please make donations by Sunday, August the 12th. Our practitioners, of course, are here to pray with you after the service. Just ask one of us who, you know, we're wearing the white or the blue um, white stoles if you'd like a prayer. This is our gift to you on Sundays um, with absolute deep love. Plus, we have a um, prayer box back there. Um, and please call in on our, play, our prayer line. And plus, you can text me. Um, I think my cell number is on there. You can text me a prayer. So we're trying to make it like so everybody feels comfortable, you know, putting in prayers all the time. So that's what we're here to do for you. We, I checked it every single day. 
and um, then I put it out to the rest of the practitioners, okay? So healing comes um, from looking in the mirror and facing the truth. This is for Esther Nichols. She's got 25 years ago when Esther Nichols looked in the mirror, she saw a broken young woman, a teenage mom, hopelessly addicted to crack, viewed abusive relationships, anything to bury her shame and self-hatred. Today, Esther is an acclaimed healer with a breakthrough spiritual approach to the 12-step recovery process that's proven more effective because of its integration with empowering divinity within principles. With her book, Soul Recovery, 12 Keys to Healing Addiction, she tells her profoundly inspiring story and systematically reveals the spiritually transforming process she used to liberate herself from crippling addiction. Our day-to-day -day dealings are grounded in our root beliefs, and those beliefs are predicted on what I can call core wounds. Esther explains, the more we can heal those core wounds, the more we can experience wholeness and live a life of purpose and strength. Esther maintains an impressively expansive career as she is an agape licensed spiritual therapist who for 17 years has studied under Michael Bernard, Bernard Beckwith, founder of the Agape International Spiritual Center. She is a motivational speaker who brings her personal experience of 25 years of sobriety coupled with a deep understanding of spiritual practices to audiences around the world. In this capacity, she facilitates workshops and gives inspirational keynote addresses to institutions, companies, organizations, incorporating concepts from the soul recovery process she developed. She's also a gifted vocalist who's completed two world tours with Rod Stewart and Bette Midler, performed multiple times at Madison Square Garden, <coughs> appeared in Oprah, the Tonight, the Tonight Show, The View, Good Morning America, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, and has released her own critically acclaimed albums of self, of soul nurturing music. Soul recovery yields quick and demonstrable results because it gets deep into the structural center of the problem that perpetrates the cycle of self destruction. People have experienced five years of recovery progress in six months. Soul recovery releases the individual from the obsession of dependence by taking the integrity and accountability of AA's 12-step process and fusing it with 12 keys of metaphysical principles and practices. We are very fortunate to have her here with us this morning and to be able to experience her amazing workshops, Keys to Abundant Living, later this afternoon. This workshop starts at 1.30, allowing you time for lunch before this life-altering workshop. Details are on the flyer in your bulletin. Please welcome Esther Nicholson. Everybody. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So this first song that I'm going to sing for you is about change. How many of you are experiencing change in your life right now? <laughs> ah. And even if that change is expected, has been expected for a while, or sometimes it feels as if the rug has been pulled out from under us and we're just kicked into change. Yes? As the universe is saying, it's time to expand. It's time to step out of the familiar into the unfamiliar. It's time to stretch beyond your comfort zone. And that can be pretty scary, yes? Yes. Even when we know that we know God, as we step into the unknown, it can be pretty scary. But here's a promise for you, and I just want to sing this, this song for you. So I just want you to think about where you're being compelled to change right now. Just take that in, and let's just take a breath together. And here we go. Everything must change. Nothing stays the same. Thank 
Except rain comes through from the clouds, sun lights up the sky, hummingbirds do fly. Winter turns to spring, a wounded heart will heal. What I'm talking about, but never much too soon. No one and nothing goes unchanged. The they will unfold cause that's the way of time no one and nothing goes unchanged yeah Yes, I do. Can I get an amen? amen? And the rain comes from the clouds every day. The sun lights up the sky. Even when you can't see it, you gotta believe it. You know what I'm talking about, sister? Come on and say, yeah. The rain, she will never leave you alone. God will never forsake you, no. We light the second candle in honor of Christianity. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We light the third candle in honor of Buddhism. May I experience love, joy, wonder, and wisdom in this life just as it is as I move to wholeness and unity. We light the fourth candle in honor of Islam. A man went to the door of the beloved and knocked. A voice asked, 
Who is there? He answered, It is I. The voice said, There is no room here for me and thee. The door remained shut. After a year of solitude and deprivation, this man returned to the door of the beloved. He knocked. A voice from within asked, Who is there? The man said, It is thou. The door was opened for him. We light the fifth candle in honor of Taoism. The great Tao flows everywhere, both to the left and to the right. It nourishes the 10,000 things. We light the sixth candle in honor of Native American traditions. Each morning upon rising and each evening before sleeping, give thanks for the life within you and for all life. For the good things the Creator has given you and for the opportunity to grow a little more each day. Consider your thoughts and actions of the past day and seek for the courage and strength to be a better person. Seek for the things that will benefit everyone. We light the final candle in honor of the Sikh religion. I challenge the darkness. If nothing else, then at least around myself, I will not let it settle. Around myself will establish light. reading today is from Esther Nicholson. You are empowered, confident, safe, and more than enough. All too often you simply forget and disconnect from your true identity. Remember, you were not created out of unworthiness, lack, or fear. You have been born into dysfunction, but you were created out of greatness. You've been longing and return home to your authentic self. Let me help get your home. Let me help you get home where you belong. <coughs> By Esther. So if you can just please take this within your own being for a few moments of contemplation. <coughs> so I'm knowing that right where we are, God is. This infinite energy of God that moves through us, as us, and around us at all times that we are absolutely anchored in this pure light, this pure energy of God that facilitates this time together, that allows ourselves to hear what Esther has to say and be able to take that within our own being and use those words in our daily life. And so I know that this time together is blessed, that it is in divine order and divine right action in every aspect with the band, with the children, with every single person here feeling that unity and love of God. And I give such thanks for this. Thank you, thank you, God. And together we say, yes. Esther? How's everybody doing? Good. Good? Yeah. Can I get an amen? Amen. I'm an amen kind of girl. You're going to roll with me today, right? Yeah. Okay. So the title of my talk is Homesick for Your Real Self. How many of you are homesick for your real self? And I want to share with you what I believe is the most powerful roadmap back to your authentic self by way of recovery. Now you heard a little bit of my story, but I don't want to talk about recovery from anything. I'm not talking about recovery from addiction or some kind of emotional crisis or financial crisis or physical crisis. We're not talking about recovery from anything. I want to talk about the recovery of something. I want to talk about the recovery of that part that, that, that God is talking about in, in Genesis where it looked around at everything that it had made in the beginning and said, behold, it is good and very good. I want you to say, I'm good and very good. I'm good and very good. We want to recover that part of you. Can I get an amen? amen? We want to talk about the rediscovery of your essential nature of worthiness. Let me hear you say worthiness. worthiness. We want to talk today about the reawakening. Now, I didn't cover this with Reverend Cece, so I hope it's okay. <laughs> I want to talk about the reawakening to your badass sexiness. Can I get an amen? <laughs> How many of y'all like feeling sexy? Don't lie. Put your hand up, girl. <laughs> but, but, you know, I used to have a different interpretation of that. I used to have a different meaning of that. I, I used to think that that meant 
that that had to do with how much weight I gained or lost, or how much money I had in the bank, or what kind of makeup I had on, or the kind of clothes I, I wore. But I, but I came to understand that as long as I was walking around with that insidious, illusion of unworthiness and not good enoughness that I could not suck it up, tone it up, color it up no matter how much I tried. Can I get an amen? Because it is insidious. Say insidious. Insidious means cunning, baffling, and powerful. It means sneaky. It means subtle. It means it comes in through the back door. It comes underneath oh. the windowsill. It comes through the garage. It comes wrapped in a big red bow. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's how those illusions of unworthiness show up. Let me give you a, a clear example. They show up as you're saying yes when you really mean no. Can I get an amen? amen. They show up as you're not being able to stand in your truth and speak your truth when it's so important for you to speak your truth. They show up as having unhealthy boundaries or not having any boundaries at all. They show up as accepting something in your life that you know on a soul level is not really what you want. But you don't feel worthy enough or deserving enough to ask for what you really want. I know I've been there. I can dig it. Yes? Yes. yes. And so how this came about in my life, how uh, a, a while back I was in negotiations with a potential client and I was having a great day, insidious. I was having a great day, feeling all spiritual, just feeling amazing and I get this phone call and I start having this conversation with this potential client and, and I'm talking and we're, we're negotiating and all of a sudden I get this sick, queasy feeling in the pit of my gut. And I, put your hand right here. This is where I feel my stuff. Is that where you feel your stuff? That's where I feel it. And I, and I looked down and I said, oh, what's the matter, sweetheart? I've started calling myself sweetheart. I said, what's the matter, sweetheart? And I was like, that doesn't feel good. What I'm saying doesn't feel good. It feels icky and it feels small. It doesn't feel like who I really am. I was like, huh? I can't make a decision from that place. I can't make a decision from that place anymore. Say, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. But here's the insidious nature of unworthiness and undeservingness. It was like, ha, huh, I couldn't get her that way. Let me get her this way. So then I started saying, ha, huh, how dare they make me an offer like that? Don't they know who I am? I'm Esther Nicholson. And I checked in, and that sick, queasy feeling was still in my gut. Because let me tell you something. Unworthiness and undeservingness and feelings of not being good enoughness will clothe itself as arrogance and self-righteousness. It clothes itself as as arrogance and self-righteousness or it clothes itself as not being enough and accepting less than what you deserve. But there's, so, there's, a, there's another. There's something else that's pure and that's right. And so I hung up the phone and I realized that the reason that I had that queasy feeling in my gut not, was not because I was in negotiations with a potential client but because the illusion of unworthiness was seeking to negotiate with the truth of my beingness. How many times have you sought to negotiate with the truth of who you are? How many times? So I said, you know, I'm gonna go in my closet. And I'm gonna do my work. I'm gonna do my soul recovery work, the work that I wanna teach you about this weekend. And I'm not going to move until I know God, until I remember my God self. And I came out of that meditation, I came out of that soul recovery work with the decision to leave the deal on the table. Say, sometimes you got to leave the deal on the table. Say it. Sometimes you got to leave the deal on the table. I came out of that meditation with the decision that I was going to walk away with nothing. Say, you gotta walk, sometimes you got to walk away with nothing. Sometimes you got to walk away with nothing. Because here was the decision. 
that when you walk away with nothing in the name of truth, when you walk away with nothing in the name of your self-value, in the name of your self-worth, and knowing that you are an, a, a, a wonderful, amazing, enough expression of God, when you walk away with nothing from that perspective, the inexhaustible, abundant, lavish universe will fill that nothingness with the infinite something that is beyond your wildest imagination. Can I get an amen? But you got to make room for it. You can't say yes to something that you don't want and then expect to get what you want. Right. Ain't gonna happen, right? Right. right? And as a result of being willing to walk away with nothing in the name of who I am as an expression of God, I still have that client in a way that is a wonderful win-win for all concerned. Where it's a wonderful expression of circulation and honor and respect. The universe will fill it either with that thing that you've walked away from, the way it needs to be, or something better. Say, or something better. Or something better. So that's why this talk today that I've been going around the world with is just so important. Because so many people come to me with emotional issues, financial issues, relationship issues, physical issues, and when we sit down together, face to face, and we unpack what's really going on underneath those conditions, we invariably find unworthiness. That they don't feel worthy or deserving of the financial freedom, the financial abundance that they desire. They don't feel good enough for the healthy, fulfilling, loving relationships that they really want. And they're too stuck and chronic fear to step into the divine purpose for which they were created. I decided to start dating again. Did you hear what I said? Yes. And I am just kind of watching myself stand in my truth, maybe for the first time in my life when it comes to relationships and stating what I want. Now, last week, I had to do some tapping. That's what we're gonna do today in the Keys to Abundant Living Workshop. I had to do some tapping, I had to do some praying to even know that I had the right to ask for what I wanted. But you know what? I did it. I was willing to walk away with nothing. I'm like, wow, I'm coming home. I'm coming home to my worthiness. That's when you know that it's working when you're willing to walk away with nothing. But when you are feeling not good enough for the financial prosperity, the healthy relationships, your, even your health and your well-beingness, your career, your purpose, I think that the cost is too high. What are those erroneous, false, negative beliefs that you hold about yourself that are not only your beliefs, by the way, they're your mama's beliefs, they're your daddy's beliefs. They're your familial, generational, and ancestral and cultural beliefs. What are those beliefs costing you? What have they been costing you all your life? Are they costing you your peace of mind? Are they costing you your financial security and abundance? Are they, is it costing you your health and feeling of well-beingness? Is it costing you the ability to step forward and live your purpose at the, at the highest level that you can live in. What is it costing you? Think about that. I want each of you to think about what is it costing you right now? Is it costing you your dignity when you say yes when you really mean no? And is the cost too high? For those of you who agree with me that the cost is too high, let me hear you say amen. Amen. Only five of you? <laughs> so, Here's what I know, is that when we reconnect in consciousness to the truth of who we are, and don't get it twisted, the truth of who you are cannot disconnect from you, because you are it, it is you, yes? yes. But we can come under the belief that we are separate and apart from it. But when we reconnect in consciousness to our God self, to our higher power, to our higher self, when we reconnect, unworthiness doesn't exist. 
It doesn't even need to be healed because it doesn't exist in the mind of God. It is an illusion. It is not the truth. Let me hear you say it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's not real. It's not real. It's a lie. It's a lie. Because when you have reconnected to your true self, you are, repeat after me, I am empowered. I am empowered. I am supremely confident. I am supremely confident. I am crystal clarity. I am crystal clarity. I am focused. I am disciplined. I am productive. I am free. And you feel free to walk forward in your, in your purpose without hesitancy. Say, without hesitancy. Because you feel safe. Can I get an amen to feeling safe? Feeling safe. Knowing that you're safe is the most important emotion you will ever have. Because when you feel safe, you can move forward. When you feel safe, you can say yes when you mean yes, and no when you mean no. When you feel safe, you can dance as if nobody's watching. You can love as if you've never been hurt, because you know you're safe. And this consciousness of oneness, not because of the kind of clothes you have on or how much weight you've gained or lost or how much money you have, but because you're home. Say, I'm home. I'm home. 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 So I'm here to help you get home this weekend if you allow me to. I like to tell people, I can't heal you. That's not my job. But I know how to get you home. Home is where the healing happens because God is your healing. Your realization of your God self within you is the healing. It is the law of elimination of anything unlike it in your life. Can I get an amen? Amen. And so the most powerful roadmap that I know to get you home is based in the 12 steps of recovery and metaphysical principles and other powerful healing modalities and joined together I call this healing practice soul recovery. And soul recovery not only has the power uh, to address and heal those life-threatening addictions that we're so familiar with like drugs and alcohol and gambling and all that other kind of stuff, but they have the power to address and heal those less obvious, life-diminishing addictions, life-diminishing emotional addictions, like the addiction. You have an addiction to the belief in unworthiness or chronic fear and worry. The addiction to distraction and procrastination. Can I get an amen? Amen. Distraction and procrastination by way of the iPhone and the internet. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And let's not leave out Netflix. <laughs> because we all know that when you click on Netflix to watch a movie, and you don't click on the movie, you click on a series. <laughs> and we all know that there's 13 to 18 episodes in a series. And you come to three, four days later. <laughs> say zoned out, zoned out, numbed out, numbed out deadened out, deadened out, dumbed out, dumbed out. Dumbed out. <laughs> beating yourself up again. I did it again. How many of you said that? I did it again. I did it again. And I haven't moved on my purpose this week. I didn't do, I didn't keep my commitment to myself this week. Because I was so afraid of my greatness. I was so afraid that I wasn't good enough for my greatness. That the insidious illusion showed up as a 13 episode series on Netflix or surfing the internet, or whatever your distraction is, it is the illusion, the cause of it, is unworthiness and undeservingness and not feeling safe to be your greatness. So we find all of these little ways to distract ourselves from our greatness. I had to find a way to bridge the gap between the 12 steps of recovery and metaphysical principles because I was a very wounded little girl and a very wounded woman.
I had to find a way to heal my stuff, to really address my stuff. Right here. Put your hands right here. Do you have stuff? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired of your stuff? I like to say, I know I have a potty mouth, but I like to say, you got to be sick of your own ass. Are you, just, are you just tired of it? Yes? And so I got tired of it because 32 years ago, I was addicted to crack cocaine and all sorts of other kind of addictions. I lost my daughter for a couple of years because I was labeled an unfit mother, and I was. And you would think that after losing my daughter to addiction, that that would have been the bottom I needed to hit, but it wasn't. My bottom came by way of sweet grace in the back of a taxi driver, a cab, who I had asked to take me into the hood to buy some drugs. And instead of doing as I requested he, that he do, that he does do, <laughs> he turned, what he did, <laughs> he, t he, he pulled his cab over to the side of the road and he turned to face me in the back seat. And he said, young lady, please don't kill yourself today. Oh. Now that wasn't the miracle. The miracle was I heard him. Mm -hmm. That in this moment of sweet grace, I looked into his eyes and the veil of illusion parted and I caught sight of myself the way I was in the beginning before I bought the story that I wasn't enough. Yeah. Who are you before you bought the story? Who are you before you bought the story, honey? Amazing. Pure energy. Empowered. Enough. Free. Safe. I caught it. I caught it. Yeah. I said, yes, I want to live. That day, I said I wanted to live. 32 years ago, I said I want to live. And that began, that, that started my long journey on emotional and spiritual recovery. Say emotional, emotional. and spiritual. Recovery. And then even after I was clean for 10 years, I didn't know that I was still walking around with unworthiness and undeservingness. I got hired by Bette Midler. Bam! The first day of rehearsal with her, she says, pack your bags, sweetie. We're on Oprah tomorrow. Bam! I'm on Oprah, and I'm hitting the high note. She points to me, hit the high note, and I hit the high note. The next day, she says, do you want to do this duet with me? Yes. Next thing I know, I'm with Rod Stewart, and I'm sitting on the stool across from him on Madison Square Garden, saying, have I told you lately that I love you? Yeah? In front of 16,000 people. Six years. And every single day, I was afraid I was going to get fired. Every single day, I couldn't accept the gift. Unworthiness. Undeservingness. Not being good enough. -ness. So here's the thing. You might manifest what you want. You might demonstrate the gift. You might get the relationship. You might get the money. You might get the career move. But if you are operating under those illusions, you won't be able to be present for them. If you are not the, a large enough spiritual container to, ex, to, 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 to experience the gift, you won't be able to enjoy it or even be there for it. Yes? So that's why this soul recovery is about healing the addiction to being the you that you think you are. What is addiction? Addiction is when you have become so enslaved to a so attached to a belief system or a thought pattern or a way of being that you become enslaved or in bondage to it no matter how much you want to change. How many of you guys really want to heal and change in here? Oh yeah. <laughs> and you've tried. And you've tried. And you've tried. Yet you find yourself circling back and defaulting to the same old thing year after year over and over and over again. Because thinking the unfamiliar thought in the familiar situation or behaving in the unfamiliar way under familiar circumstances, you know what? From a disconnected consciousness, it is impossible. No matter how many affirmations you do, it is impossible to change from a disconnected consciousness. So you might be saying, okay, Esther, I get that. So now what? Now that you've told me I'm at it, 
<laughs> and for those of you who, who might have thought in the beginning of this talk, oh God, I should have brought my sister. <laughs> She's an addict and an alcoholic, you know. I'd like to say no, this talk is for you. So, what is the answer? What is the first step to the recovery, rediscovery, and reawakening to your soul? The first step, you've got to get out of the way. Say, get out of the way. Say it. How do we get out of the way? Have you ever tried to get out of the way? Have you ever tried to surrender? How's that working for you? We of ourselves can do nothing. And so we must admit personal powerlessness. And in New Thought, we don't like to do that because we think, we falsely believe that by admitting personal powerlessness that we are affirming something that we don't want to experience. Admitting personal powerlessness is not, is not affirming anything. It's acknowledging that you of yourself, based on your limited five senses, cannot heal yourself. And Jesus the Christ was the first spiritual master of record that I'm aware of who admitted personal powerlessness when he said, of myself, I can do nothing. So I want you to look at that thing that you are trying to figure out right now. That thing that you are trying so hard to heal. That thing that you are trying so hard to get over. Even your thinking. Even that mental chatter that's running non-stop in your head. I want you to just look at it right now. And I want you to say, I admit, I admit personal, personal powerlessness. powerlessness. I don't have to do it. I can't do it. I can't figure it out. I and I want you to grab your wrist, and when you, I want you to do a big inhale, and when you exhale, I want you to say peace. 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 Say, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I don't it ain't mine to do. I don't know how to do it. I can't fix it. I admit powerlessness. Inhale. Exhale. Peace. This gets you out of the way. This gets your limited power out of the way so that now there's an opening to tap into the infinite power that can do for you what you've never been able to do for yourself. And how do we do that? In the second step of recovery, we come to believe that a power greater than ourselves can restore us to wholeness, can restore us to sanity. And what is that power greater than yourself? It's your real self. It's the truth of your beingness. And what is it restoring you to? It's restoring you to that part of you that is the real you before you attach to the story. Before you bought the lie that someone told you that you weren't good enough, that you weren't worthy. It restores you. How does it restore you? You must make a decision. Say, I gotta make a decision. I gotta make a decision. You must make a decision to turn your will and your life over to the care of God as you understand God. And I like to say, if the God of your understanding isn't working for you in any area of your life, then it's time to get a new God or it's time to get a new understanding. Can I get an amen? amen. So as we come to this new understanding, and we surrender everything, we surrender our fears, we surrender our needs, we surrender our desires, we surrender everything that we think we know, we surrender our patterns, we surrender all of the ways in which we block ourselves from the very good we desire. Now something amazing is happening. Now this divine connection is happening so that when you affirm, it's not little old you that's, that's affirming. It is the infinite presence within you that is declaring itself as you. Amen? Amen. Now your word has power. Now you have the power to hold your thought on what you want versus what you don't want. Yeah. Now you have the discipline, the power, the focus. And of course, there are many more steps to clean your house so that you could hold that thought, so that you could continue to be connected. Yeah. 
And if any of you are here today that are touched by what I'm saying and you want to go deeper into this work, then please come see me in the back of the room. But here's what admitting powerlessness, coming to believe that a power greater than yourself, which is your real self, can restore you. <coughs> Making a decision to turn your life over. Are you ready to turn your life over? Are you tired of trying to do it by yourself? Who would you be? How would you think if you knew that you were loved, that you were safe? No matter how many mistakes you made, no matter what you've done or haven't done, that you were safe. That's what this work, Soul Recovery, does, is it gets you home. But it does more than get you home. It wakes you up to the realization that you never left home at all. Just like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. She had a dream that she was lost. But when she woke up, she found that she was safely at home in her own bed. You are home right now, safely in your own bed. And so I want to support you this weekend in waking up to that fact. Because even though that's true, if you're asleep to it, then it's not serving you. Yes? Right. So we want to wake up. Say, I want to wake up to home. I want to wake up. When you wake up, you will speak your word and the seas will part. You will speak your word and the mountain in your life will be moved. I promise you. I'm not just here as your speaker. I am here as infinite possibility. You're, you're looking at a woman right now who was so filled with anxiety that I couldn't sleep with the lights out until I was 26 years old. Who, who cannot remember my life without chronic fear and anxiety. Couldn't remember it. But who today, even when that comes up for me, ah, uh, I know how to get home. <sighs> Let go. And live the life that God has for me to live. I want to share that with you. Whether you're looking at that spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, God is your life. You deserve it. You are worthy of it. You are good enough for it. But you got to wake up to it. Come on home. Wake up to home. Because i got to tell you, there's absolutely no place like it. I promise you. Yes? Yes. Peace and blessings. Thank you. We can just go into prayer right now. Thank you so much, Esther. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I'm knowing that right here, right now, this infinite energy of God and peace and love has filled us, is within us, and is all around us. It is in that opening within our own soul. It is all of that being manifested in this moment, that we are part of this divinity. We are part of this power. We are empowered beings right here in this room, whole, complete, and perfect on absolutely every single level, knowing that which contains within our own being everything everything that moves us to a higher level. We have everything that is needed every moment of every single day because we are that divine empowered being. And so I give such great thanks knowing that all of this today, everything that's been said, everything that is here in this moment is blessed. It's by divine appointment. And I give such thanks for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, as I release these words into law, knowing it is absolute. And together we say, and so it is. Can I just have the ushers up here, please? For our, it's now time for our joyous giving. Are you doing reflection? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's a little bit different today, so... Now let us take this opportunity to support our mission of providing powerful tools for people to change their lives and uncover their spiritual magnificence so that together we can change the world. When we give to the center, that's what we're supporting. So we ask you to do, do what you do, give what you can consciously. Please take in your, in your gift in your hands or heart and affirm with me. I know... The activity, the activity of abundance in my life and in this center, in my life and in this center. 
I give and receive, I give and receive generously from this everlasting flow of good. And so it is. So you know I used to sing with Rod Stewart, right? Yes. And he fired me. <laughs> because I had reached a weight at an age that was no longer appropriate to sing Hot Legs behind Rod Stewart. <laughs> I really just want to ask you, have you seen Rod lately? <laughs> I'm only kidding, because sometimes we need someone to kick us out into our greatness because we're holding on to what we think is our safety. So I thank Rod Stewart. I thank him for kicking me out to my greatness. It didn't feel good at the moment, but I'm so grateful right now. So I want to dedicate this next song to Mr. Stewart <laughs> that I've rearranged for him, and I'm dedicating it to you. So stand up and let's party. Come on, let's get some lights up in here. Come on. Woo, woo. Turn that up, baby. Come on, turn that up, please. Oh, come on, come on, come on, oh yeah, if I gotta say, may the good Lord be with you down every road you run, Woo. it may sunshine and happiness surround you when you're far from home.
I said for ever young. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to share with you. What I'm offering while I'm here, I'm leaving tomorrow uh, afternoon, but I, anyone who wants to see me in a one-on-one -on -one private session, I am here for several hours tomorrow. You can sign up for that at the table to see me in a one-on-one -on -one private session. If you can't see me tomorrow, I also do Skype and telephone if you want to set up a session with me to talk about the three-month soul recovery program, or you just want to see me for an hour. Uh, tomorrow to like let's just get down to the nitty-gritty do some tapping do some prayer work get clear about what you're going what you're going through right now so that's one aspect of it my book soul recovery I forgot to have them shipped <laughs> <laughs> and so the book soul recovery which was originally um, uh, published by Hay House ha uh, is the unification of the 12 steps and metaphysical principles that takes you week by week through each step it's the powerful roadmap that takes you from the illusion of powerlessness to the infinite truth of your beingness of empowerment. It does inner child work, it does the steps, it does forgiveness work, everything is in this book. So if you want to pre-order the book, we can, you can sign up and pay for the book today. I will make sure that I sign the book when I get home for you. Sign with your name in it and have them shipped to you immediately and you'll be able to pick them up here. Um, next Sunday. So that's that. If you sign up on my email list, you will receive 21 days of free meditation audio downloads. Okay? Right. So the keys to abundant living workshop this afternoon. You don't have a physical problem. You don't have a financial problem. You don't have a relationship problem. You have a connection issue. You have a connection issue because of those illusions of unworthiness and not enoughness. So this afternoon in the workshop, how many of you know about EFT tapping? We're going to be doing that. We're going to be tapping out. We're going to be creating, uh, breaking your agreement with those old karmic agreements, whatever they are, and making a new agreement with the original agreement of your wholeness. So there's a lot of wonderful stuff that happens in this workshop that really just clears away stuff so that you can get home, so that you can get to the truth of your beingness, to the abundance that is your divine birthright. So I just wanted to share that with you. Let me know if you want to see me tomorrow. Peace. I'm so honored to be here. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks to everybody who made this morning service possible. Our ushers, greeters, and practitioners, we welcome the welcome team, the Higher Mind Band, and of course you. Please remember to attend Esther workshops here today at 1.30. I do have soup that I made, so it's vegan um, if anybody wants that. Um, I know there's two hours in between, basically, but whatever you want to do. Um, so stand up. Obviously, you're standing up. We're going to go to the information. It's been a lot to read today. Anyway. All right. So together, repeat after me. I am amazing. I am amazing. I am loving. I am loving. I am loving. And I am empowered. I am empowered. And I am a divine child of God. I am a divine child of God. And so it is. And so it is. Have a good week. You too. Thank you. Thank you.